He was a pathetic loser who gets involved in a real-life battle royale and surprises everyone by becoming the strongest. Makoto is a very basic Japanese teenager who luckily gets accepted to Hope's Peak Private Academy, which is an elite school that takes in only super-duper talent across different fields. As soon as Makoto steps in through the gate of the school, he suddenly loses consciousness and wakes up in an empty classroom. He finds a note with directions which lead him to an auditorium where he finds all the other freshmen assembled. There he runs into the most popular girl from his junior high and the super-duper idol, Sayaka who surprisingly remembers a loser like him. As the students are wondering who did this to them, a shrill voice blares out of the speakers and announces the start of the entrance ceremony. A stuffed bear toy then reveals himself as the source of the voice and jumps out on the podium in front of the freshmen. He introduces himself as Monokuma, the school principal, and adds that the students are now locked in the school for life. The only way to be able to leave is killing someone which puts the 15 freshmen in a real-life battle royale, where everyone's unique abilities will help them survive. This scares some students and pisses the others off. When the bear starts walking away as if nothing happened, Mondo the super-duper biker picks him up and threatens to destroy him. This just enrages the bear and he starts beeping and his eyes start blinking. Mondo realizes that he has turned into a time bomb and throws the bear away immediately, barely avoiding the explosion. Just when everyone thinks that that was the end of the bear, the principal reappears from behind the podium and jumping back on top of it, he warns the students that this will be their last warning. Anyone who violates the principal will face immediate death after this. He then officially announces the end of the entrance ceremony and disappears behind the podium, leaving everyone really shocked and confused. As soon as the news sinks in, all the students start trying to figure out a way to escape. The super-duper fighter, Sakura, tries punching one of the doors with his enhanced fire punch, while Mondo tries looking for a hidden door in and around the podium that the bear may have used. While none of this works, the students refuse to lose hope and decide to start looking for clues that lead them to the mastermind. Suddenly by Akuya, the super-duper progeny announces that he would like to go off on his own since he does not trust any of the freshmen. This pisses the short-tempered Mondo off, and he tries to stop by Akuya. Just as it is going to turn into a full-blown fight, Makoto steps in to try and control them. Mondo, who refuses to be commanded by a loser, throws a punch at him which makes Makoto lose consciousness. After a while, the loser wakes up in his room and sees Sayaka, who was looking after him while he was unconscious. Not knowing what to do with a woman's attention, he just declares that he would like to help the others gather clues and gets up to leave. His plan fails miserably as he is stopped by the girl who declares herself as his assistant here on out. Later, he reaches the dining table where everyone has gathered for the meeting with Sayaka. The prefect Kiyotaka then announces the start of the meeting as soon as everyone settles down and proposes that everyone exchange notes from their investigations. They conclude that this investigation was useless as it led them neither to an escape nor the mastermind behind all of it, and they start to panic. Kayoyuko, the mysterious freshman, suddenly stands up and asks everyone to accept the situation as they do not have any other option. She makes them promise to accept a few ground rules though and asks them to pause the killing at night. Three days pass by looking for an exit, but because there is no progress made in the investigation, everyone starts getting anxious. Monokuma tries to provoke the students to start killing each other, but when they still refuse, he decides to give them a motive to escape. He asks them to move to the Ev room claiming that he has a gift for them where each of them is handed a DVD and a player. In the DVDs are recorded messages from people that they love. Suddenly, the clips change to show destroyed homes and deaths of these people which scares the shit out of everyone. Sayaka gets especially triggered by this and tries to run away to save her loved ones delete herself, but Makoto manages to stop her and remind her that the metal doors trapping them cannot be broken. He assures her that he will get her out of here. Meanwhile, all the other students gear up to fight this unexplained evil that is threatening them to kill or be killed. Later that night, as Makoto is exploring his room, he notices that there are various murder weapons kept ready for him. He tries to go into the shower, but the door seems to be jammed and can only be opened in a certain way. Suddenly the doorbell rings and he opens the door to see a scared Sayaka standing in his doorway. She tells him that her bathroom door suddenly started to shake and rattle like someone was trying to break in, but when she opened the door, there was no one there. She suspected that someone broke their promise and was out to kill at night. The incel immediately jumps to grab the chance and offers that she stay in his room for the night. Sayaka senses his hidden agenda and asks him to switch rooms with her instead and eager to impress her, the loser agrees. Just as the night curfew announcement starts, Makoto leaves his room and enters Sayaka's. While he swears to himself to protect the girl no matter what, she is brewing some evil plan in the other room. The next morning, Makoto wakes up thanks to the announcement and heads to the dining room to have breakfast with everyone else. 
Gradually everyone arrives except Sayaka which stresses the guy out, and he runs back to his room to check on her, where he finds the room covered in scratch marks and Sayaka lying in a pool of blood in the bathroom, which shocks him, and he falls to the ground. After a while, he wakes up in the gym where he has been carried to by the other students and asks about his crush. They confirm that she is dead, and he immediately bolts to see her, but is stopped by Kiyotaka. Makoto is pissed that they are all wasting time in the gym instead of investigating, but the others inform him that they have been called here by the principal. Monokuma shows up just then, and when Makoto tries to get to him for killing his crush, the bear tells him that he would never kill anyone directly because he enjoys watching the game. He further adds that he will be able to find the killer in the classroom trial that will follow the murder according to procedure. If the killer manages to not get caught, they will graduate right away. The super-duper fashion girl Junko refuses to participate and crushes the bear under her foot. This deeply offends the bear, and he summons spears which pierce the girl from all sides and immediately kill her. After that, without giving them any warning, he calls all of them into the classroom to figure out who the killer was. Makoto arrives in the room after everyone else and finds out that all of them suspect him since the body was in his room. He does not get a lot of time to convince them otherwise though because just then, Monokuma asks all of them to get into a massive lift that takes them to the courtroom. They see Monokuma sitting on the judge's seat. He asks them to take their place in each of the 15 stands placed in a circle in the middle and begin the debate. Half the students start blaming Makoto since the corpse was found in his room when he suddenly remembers that the door to the bathroom was forced open. He points out that he would not have had to break in because he knew how to open the poorly fitted door. This finally clears him of any suspicion. Sakura and the super duper swimmer, Aoi suddenly remember that when they were having tea in the kitchen last night, they saw Siaka come in and take the knife that was used as the murder weapon. Kayoyuko then tells everyone that she found a note by Sayaka inviting someone to her room alone, and that the nameplates on Makoto and Sayaka's rooms too had been switched. This makes it clear that Sayaka was planning to murder someone and blame it on the guy, but got killed instead by her victim in self-defense. Just then, Makoto remembers the puzzling dying message written by Sayaka on the wall behind her in blood. After giving it a bit of thought, they realize that it spells out the name of Leon, the super-duper baseball player. Kayoyuko then reminds everyone of the broken crystal they had found in the trash room, which had been thrown to press the on button on the furnace to burn the bloody shirt whose piece they had found nearby. She points out that such an accurate throw could have only been pulled off by a baseballer. Seeing all the odds stacked against him, Leon finally accepts the accusation and tries to escape his punishment, but the locked doors leave him no place to run to. The bear then wraps a noose around his neck and drags him away to a baseball cage. He is tied up in front of a pitching machine that pitches extremely high-speed balls at the dude, crushing his body bit by bit. Makoto is disturbed by this and is about to attack the sadistic bear, but Kayoyuko manages to stop him just in time and convince him to wait so that he can actually avenge Sayaka's death. Later that night, Kayoyuko shows up in Makoto's room to console him about Sayaka's death and convince him to move on, but he vows to never forget the deaths and avenge them all. The next morning in the shower Makoto cannot help thinking about how all traces that Sayaka ever existed had vanished. Just then, the bear announces that the second floor which was barred away earlier would now be accessible to the students as a prize for being successful in the trial. All of them immediately head upstairs to explore where Makoto finds an envelope in the drawer containing the actual school principal's notice. They are surprised to find out that the notice is about Hope's Peak Academy shutting down for a while. This makes them all realize that this is just a game for the mastermind, and some of them decide to give up on escaping and instead play by the rules to win. The next morning as everyone is enjoying their breakfast, the bear announces an emergency and asks everyone to assemble in the gym right away. Once they are there, he tells them that his boredom is on the rise because of the lack of any action and hence he has decided to give them another motive. He tosses envelopes containing each student's deepest darkest secrets and threatens to reveal them if no murder happens in 24 hours. The bear's plan is successful and he announces that someone has been killed the next morning. Everyone immediately rushes to the dining area to discuss this and Bayakuya asks Makoto to come with him to investigate and takes him to the swimming pool area. When he approaches the girl's changing room, Makoto tries to stop him by reminding him of the machine gun that is installed there to kill anyone who enters the opposite gender's room. However he finds the door unlocked and when they enter, they find the ultimate programmer, Chihiro, crucified in the center. Bayakuya then takes him to the library and shows him confidential police records that he found of the serial killer genocider show, and tells him that the style of murder is the exact same. Just then Aoi rushes in and tells them that the super duper literary girl Tauko has locked herself in her room and will only talk to Bayakuya. Once they arrive, Tauko peeks out the door for a while and apologizes to the guy for letting the serial killer run free before shutting the door again. 
However, the other two do not get the chance to think a lot about it, as the bear suddenly announces the second trial. As soon as the trial starts, Bayakuya reveals that Toko had revealed to him that she has multiple personality disorder and is the killer genocider show. She gets triggered by his betrayal and confrontation. She faints but immediately wakes up as her alter ego claiming that while she is the murderer, she was not involved with this incident. Makoto suddenly points out that the murder indeed does not fit her style because she killed only males using scissors. Chihiro however was a girl who was killed by being hit by dumbbells on her head. He adds that the only other person who knew about the serial killer's way of killing was Baikuya since he had access to the police files in his rich dad's library. The girl being crucified using a cord from the library further points in his direction because that was where the guy spent almost all his days. Makoto suddenly remembers seeing a poster suited in the boy's room in the place where the corpse was. He realizes that the killer just made the room look like a girl's room, when it in fact was the boy's room to throw the others off track. Kayoyuko adds that the programmer was a crossdresser, and thus him being in the boy's room makes more sense. This shocks the hell out of Bayakuya which immediately clears him of any suspicion because the killer must have known this fact. As they are discussing the crime further, Mondo stupidly lets slip that the victim had a blue tracksuit which is immediately noticed by Makata as knowledge that not everyone had. He thus concludes that the biker was the murderer and had used one of the dead girl's access cards to access the girl's room to switch things around. Mondo accepts the charges and the bear explains that when the crossdresser's secret was about to be exposed, he decided to become stronger to defend himself against bullies and Mando had offered to help him. The biker explains that in the biker gang his brother was the Alpha, and he was his second in command. When his brother retired, he did get the title of the Alpha, but his brother's greatness always put him under pressure. Thus on the night of his brother's retirement he challenged him to a showdown, and in the middle of the race he started driving recklessly as he was desperate to win. Suddenly a truck approached him at full speed and his brother kicked him out of the way to save him but himself crashed into the truck. Thus he was completely responsible for his brother's death. When the secrets were about to leak, he was scared but the programmer was brave enough to face his weakness and grow stronger. This made him feel extremely jealous, and in a fit of rage, he ended up smashing the guy with a dumbbell. After the biker has been convicted, the bear drags him to his punishment. He ties the biker up on a bike and launches it at full speed in a motorcycle death cage. The bike keeps speeding up and eventually the extreme force kills the biker. The sadistic bear turns his remains into bread and eats it to satisfy his weird kinks. Later that day, the bear is chilling with his spy that he has sneaked in with the other students and reveals that there is a 16th high schooler among them. Later that night, Aoi cannot sleep and decides to go take a swim. However, once she reaches the gym, she sees Chihiro's ghost there and runs back to her room. The next morning, the third floor opens up to the students with its windows, unsurprisingly blocked off by metal plates. The prefect is traumatized by his best friend, Mondo's death, and has not spoken a word since then. As soon as all of them finish breakfast, they are asked to report to the gym right away. Once everyone arrives, Monokuma appears on his usual place on the podium and summons 10 billion yen in cash before them. He announces that whoever graduates will be given this money to provoke them to kill each other quicker and disappears. This plants doubts in everyone's minds, but the super duper gambler, Celestia asks all of them to shut up saying that their desperation to go back to the outside world allows the mastermind to manipulate them. Just then, Sakura notices that something is off with Aoi, and when she tells everyone about the ghost she saw in this room, everyone descends into intense fear. Just then Makoto notices that a locker is open in the changing room, and when he peeks in, he notices a laptop. Kayoyuko remarks that the changing room is the only room without surveillance cameras which makes it the perfect place to hide something. She switches on the laptop, and it opens up to a recorded version of Chihiro. It turns out to be an AI program that the programmer had put into the fixed laptop. When asked what it is doing, the AI reveals that it has been tasked with analyzing all the files in the hard disk and adds that they are all very heavily encrypted. Seeing Chihiro again triggers an intense breakdown in Kiyotaka, and the AI plays him a simulation of Mondo, which motivates him to do everything to avenge his best friend. After he has left to strategize, Kayoyuko asks the AI to continue the analysis, and before it leaves, it shows them a picture of Mondo, Leon and Chihiro that it found in one of the drives. Since none of them knew each other before coming here, they wonder if their comrades are still alive, or is the picture simply forged by Monokuma. Later as Mikata is walking towards his room, he hears the ultimate magazine maker Hifumi scream. When he rushes to check the situation out, he is informed that the ghost that AoE saw the previous night was just Hifumi talking to the AI. They are trying to get his reason behind talking to the AI in the middle of the night, but he simply tells them that he did it because that was the only time a girl would talk to him. Just then, Kiyotaka rushes out of the sauna and tries to claim the AI for himself so that he would be able to avenge his bro. 
However, Kaiyuko shuts everyone up, and since this is the only clue they have at the moment, bans everyone from entering the changing room without permission. Later that night, Makoto is sitting on his bed feeling hopeful about the situation because of the AI when his doorbell rings. When he opens the door, the super duper shaman, Yasuhiro rushes in and grabs him in a headlock. He informs him that Kaiyuko has called everyone to the changing room and carries him there. When he arrives there, he sees that the laptop is missing from the locker. She had trained the AI to scream if Hifumi or Kiyotaka came to take it, and thus they cannot be the thieves since no one heard anything. Bayakuya tells everyone that he is positive that there is a traitor among them who has been planted to ensure that the game goes smoothly. Just as he is about to explain further, the bear interrupts him with an announcement about the start of the curfew period. The next morning a lot of the students do not show up for breakfast, which makes them wonder if something has happened. This prompts Kayoyuka, Aoi, Sakura, and Makoto to split up and look for them. Aoi goes up to the third floor where she notices an open door. When she looks inside, she sees Celestia lying on the floor unconscious and screams. Once Makoto and Sakura arrive, they manage to wake her up, and she tells them that the person who did this to her was very dodgy. They hit her in the head with a mallet and kidnapped Hifumi and ran away. She tells them that the kidnapper went in the direction of the second floor, and remembering that that is where Kayoyuka is, the gang rushes to look for her. As they are looking around, Makoto runs into Bayakuya and Tauko who have no idea where the magazine maker is. Just then the others find him with a bloodied head. He was hit by a similar mallet that they found near Celestia. The gambler finds a video camera nearby which recorded everything and shows the others that the kidnapper was dressed up as a robot. All of them split up to take the robot down while Hifumi rests in the infirmary. Suddenly, they hear Celestia scream and once they reach there, she tells them that she saw the robot entering the physics lab on the third floor. Just then, they hear Hifumi scream and decide to split into two groups to go have a look at both the lab and the infirmary. As soon as Makoto, Celestia, and Aoi arrive at the infirmary on the lower floor, they see Hifumi lying dead with another mallet by his side. Aoi starts feeling nauseous due to the blood, and as Celestia offers to take her to the washroom, Makoto rushes upstairs to call everyone else. He finds the others standing over a dead Kiyotaka who has been killed similarly. Telko had fainted because of the sight of blood. Just as he informs the others of Hifumi's death Celestia rushes in and tells them that the corpse of the magazine maker is missing. They rush down to the infirmary to check the situation out, but as they are discussing, they remember that Tauko is still upstairs. Fortunately she is still unharmed when Makoto arrives upstairs, but Kiyotaka's corpse has disappeared too. Since the only person that they have not seen all day is Yasuhiro, they conclude that he is the murderer. Bayakuya reminds them that the school rules say that a maximum of two people can be killed by one person, and hence decides to focus on finding the hidden corpses instead. Celestia finds them lying in the gym, and when they arrive, they notice Hifumi still moving. He opens his eyes but starts babbling nonsense. Aoi asks him about the culprit, and he names Yasuhiro and dies on the spot without another word. The gang still decides to investigate since Kaiyuko too has not been seen since breakfast, and even though only the main culprit graduates and there is no benefit in collaborating with them, they decide to not risk their lives by guessing the wrong culprit. Makoto volunteers to go look for the two, and when he runs into Kaiyuko, she just asks him to gather everybody together. Once they are near the swimming pool, she opens a cupboard and shows them the robot costume that she found. It turns out that Yasuhiro is still inside the costume, and as he tries to walk out, he trips and falls to the ground. He asks them to help him out of the costume as he is stuck inside it. He tells them that last night he received a note from someone asking him to meet them in the lab in the middle of the night. When he reached there, he was attacked from behind and knocked out. When he woke up, he was already in the costume. Bayakuya asks him to show the note as proof, but he cannot find it anywhere. As the others are busy pressuring him into confessing, Kayoyuko walks out of the room without another word to have a look at the corpses. Makoto follows her outside and tries to ask her what she was doing near the swimming pool, but she refuses to give him details about what she was investigating. Once there, Kayoyuko finds a piece of paper crumpled up in Kiyotaka's hand, and just then, the students are called for the trial. During the trial, everyone keeps insisting that it was Yasuhiro, but he keeps passionately denying it. Celestia opposes him saying that she found blueprints and parts of the robot in the shaman's room, which further prove that he did it. However, Makoto pulls out the note that Yasuhiro had given him and notes that the handwriting is very different. Moreover, the bloodstains clearly indicated that Kiyotaka's corpse was dragged to the room on a trolley which would not have been possible for Yasuhiro wearing the stiff robot costume. Since no one else was capable of moving Hifumi's huge body up the stairs, Kayoyuko proposes that he walked up himself and pretended to be dead. Makoto also points out that while his glasses were bloodstained when they first found him, they were clean when they saw him in the gym. This meant that he cleaned them to be able to walk there. 
Bayakuya then adds that the blood surrounding Hifumi could have come from the infirmary's blood bank. Sakura agrees, saying that the art storage room, which can only be locked from the inside, was locked when they were looking for the corpses which might have been when Hifumi was dealing with Kiyotaka's corpse. Kayoyuko lands the final blow saying that she found a torn note in Hifumi's underwear, which fits the piece of paper found in Kiyotaka's hand. In the note, he had asked Kiyotaka to meet him in the physics lab, where the prefect's corpse was found. As they wonder what killed Hifumi, Makoto informs them that there was a freshly washed hammer on the wall of their final resting place. And since Hifumi was killed in the same way as Kiyotaka in the end, they conclude that he was tricked into being an accomplice by the real murderer. Makoto suddenly remembers that Celestia had hinted that there were two deaths even before Kiyotaka was found and speaks out the possibility that the picture in her camera is Hifumi carrying the robot and not the other way around. When she refuses claiming Hifumi had named the shaman, Makoto insists that she show them her handbook as it must display her real full name. When she goes quiet, he concludes that she indeed is the killer and asks her to confess. Once she is confirmed guilty, the bear confirms that her last name was Yasuhiro indeed. She stole the AI from the changing room and planted it in Kiyotaka's room. She then told Hifumi that the prefect violated her to force her to steal the AI for him, which riled him up enough to kill the prefect. Getting out of this place with Monokuma's 10 billion, Yen would have let her fulfill her dream of living in a castle which led to her doing all of this. The bear then drags her to her punishment where she is tied up at a stake and burnt by the public like a witch. A fire truck rushes to save her but it crashes into her instead, smashing her into the wall behind her and killing her right away. Later that day Makoto and Kayuka keep the laptop back in its place and he gets her to trust him after a lot of convincing. She tells him that during her personal investigation of the place, she found a supply closet in the second floor boy's washroom with a hidden door at the back. When Makoto goes through the door, he reaches a hidden library, and when he looks through the books he comes across a student register. Just as he opens it and finds a note saying that they are not supposed to leave the school, a masked figure hits him in the head with a metal rod and he passes out. When he regains consciousness, he sees that all the books have disappeared and just leaves wondering what this strange incident was about. On his way back to his room, he hears noises from the gymnastics room, and when he looks inside, he sees Sakura with an eye glowing bright blue standing with Monokuma. Sakura punches the bear in the face and knocking him down before rushing towards each other with an air kick. Sakura tells him that she no longer wants to be in his service and instead wants to fight him, and he reminds her that he has hostages which throws her off guard. Makoto is seeing all this play out through a gap in the door that he is peeking in through and wonders whether the fighter is the bear's secret agent. The next morning Aoi, Sakura and Makoto set out to explore the newly opened fourth floor when the fighter senses that something is wrong with the guy. When he refuses, she just decides to let it slide, and they proceed to the chemistry lab. There they find some poison and Sakura asks them to be careful. Makoto then leaves to explore alone when he runs into Kayoyuko, who asks him about his thoughts on the hidden room. He starts telling her what had happened, and when he starts talking about the note he found she asks him to do it later, as they are surrounded by CCTV cameras at the moment. She then senses that something is wrong and asks him about it, but when he refuses to tell her, she gets cranky and leaves. Later as everyone is discussing their findings, they start making a plan to break into two rooms that were locked. They decide to use Sakura's strength for the purpose. Monokuma hears this through the cameras and makes a new rule banning everyone from opening locked doors. This makes the students wonder if the bear himself is hiding behind one of those, and they decide to ask the AI for help. Once the AI is booted up, it tells them that the file analysis is complete, and when asked about what it discovered, it tells them that the plan to make students spend their entire lives in the school was made by the actual school. A big despair-ridden event almost caused the school to shut down a year ago which gave birth to this plan. It adds that the actual principal who was in charge of the plan is still somewhere within the school which makes them assume that he is the one who is controlling Monokuma. It also tells them that it found another weird picture and then shows them another photo of dead students that it found in the drive of the laptop. Kayoyuko suddenly vows to find the actual principal no matter what. Just then, Monokuma calls all of them to the gym right away. Once everyone is there, he confesses to have planted an agent among them, and when they ask him about it, he reveals that it is Sakura. The students refuse to believe him, but he asks them to do whatever they want with the information and leaves. The moment he disappears, Sakura confirms that it is true and apologizes that she kept it from them for so long. When the others start to confront her Aoi tries to defend her best friend saying that Sakura was probably used by the evil overlord. Makoto agrees, telling everyone about the fight that he saw and the hostage conversation that he overheard. Bayakuya however being the jerk that he is, refuses to believe her and asks her to tell them who the mastermind was to win his trust. 
When she refuses saying that she does not know, it just raises his suspicions even more. He then asks her what her task was to which she replies that she was supposed to kill someone if the game stagnates too much at any point. As the others get even more defensive against her AOA gets even more aggressive in her defense. She then asks them to stop fighting over her since it is her responsibility. She apologizes to AOA for not telling this secret to her before today. She tells her that she was too afraid that her best friend would hate her, and simply walks away vowing to take care of the bear even if she dies in the process. Bayakuya immediately asks everyone to be wary of Sakura and Tauko backs him up. Aoi keeps defending her, but they point out that she herself does not know Sakura a lot. Yasuhiro adds that he would trust her if she kills the mastermind, but this just pisses Aoi off because that might lead to her death. Bayakuya immediately says that her dying would be good as the evil team would then be down by one member. Hearing this about her best friend pisses Aoi off, and she gives the rich dude a tight slap across his face. She calls him a monster and tells him that he should be the one to die, and he just provokes her even more. This also offends Tauko who is a devoted waifu to Bayakuya at this point. When Kayouka tries to calm them down, the swimmer simply leaves to go back to her room. Kayouka warns Bayakuya to not take others' emotions this lightly, as this quality of his might come back to bite him one day. Just then the bear announces the start of curfew time. Later that night Makoto steps out of his room and hears a scream. When he rushes to see what is wrong, he sees that Tauko has entered her serial killer persona and has attacked Aoi for saying things about Bayakuya earlier that day. Yasuhiro got stuck near them under an overturned table when he tried to stop the girls from fighting. Makoto frees him and asks him to help take Aoi to the infirmary and once she is bandaged up she gets up to leave. Makoto stops her and asks her what exactly happened between the girls. She tells them that they entered an argument over Sakura because Tauko was about her. Just then the fighter rushes in through the door and when she learns what happened to her best friend, she is thoroughly enraged and her body lights up with her superpower aura. Yasuhiro runs out of the room like a scared coward and Makoto tries to calm her down, but she just walks out of the room and Aoi follows her. Kayoyuko shows up upon hearing the ruckus and Makoto then asks her if she is still angry at him, but she denies. She assures him that she now knows that he was only hiding Sakura's truth and understood why he did so. She adds that the AI has asked to talk to them, and when they reach the changing room, the AI asks them to take it to a place with network connectivity so that it can fight alongside them. Although it is risky, the AI keeps insisting, and they decide to place it in the hidden room. Makoto volunteers and places the laptop there and connects it to the network. The AI reassures him that it will find a lead and make sure that all of them get out of this place. A few days later, as Makoto is sitting deep in thoughts in the dining area, Kayoyuko runs to him scared and asks him to follow her. They reach the rec room where Aoi is crying in front of the door. She tells them that Sakura is locked inside and she has been trying to get her to open the door for a while. The swimmer tells him that Sakura has been unresponsive for quite a while which worries Makoto and he breaks the glass of the door. He then puts his hand in and unlocks the door and immediately rushes towards the fighter who is sitting on the couch only to find out that she is dead. Aoi barely holds herself together and goes to call everyone else while Makoto and Kayoyuko investigate the body. They notice that she has been hit on the head twice and has also vomited blood. There is also some strange yellow powder on her shoes and a broken glass bottle nearby. Once the others arrive, Aoi informs the duo that these three were called into the rec room by Sakura earlier, which makes them the last people to have seen her. The trial begins with Aoi claiming that one of Bayakuya, Tauko and Yasuhiro is responsible for the murder. Bayakuya tells her that he did not go at all and Yasuhiro claims that he did not either, but Tauko interrupts them with the claim that she saw the shaman killing her. She says that she got to the room early and hid in the locker. Later she heard Sakura and the shaman coming in and Sakura seemed to be about to kill him. She claims that she heard him crashing a glass bottle against the fighter's head to save his ass. Aoi believes her and immediately asks the bear to start the vote, but Makoto objects saying that Sakura had two hits to her head and not just one as Tauko described. The shaman then agrees that he hit her once because he freaked out as she seemed hell-bent on killing him. But clearly it is not his hit that killed her. Baikuya then asks Tauko the rest of the story, and she tells him that when Yasuhiro ran out of the room, she stepped out of the locker. But just then, she saw an angry as hell Sakura with a bloodied head and fainted right then and there out of fear. She then calls upon the serial killer persona to complete the story. Genocider Show tells them that she was picked up by Sakura after fainting, and after she woke up, seeing the angry Sakura so up close freaked her out. Because of her immense fear, she picked up a bottle nearby and smashed it into the fighter's head to save her own life. 
when Aoi is eager to convict the serial killer who she now believes killed her best friend, Makoto again interrupts and reminds them that the corpse was on the couch and not near the magazine shelves where the incident with Tauko took place. Thus he concludes that that blow could not have been the cause of death. Baikuya agrees with his theory and pulls out a bottle of poison that was out of place in the chemistry lab. Since it was in the nutrients rack, he is sure that it is not real poison and drinks a bit of it to prove his point. While this scares everyone nothing happens to Bayakuya. Kayoyuka then asks him for the bottle and pours the content out in her hand. She picks up a bit of it with her finger, and after smelling it, she declares that it is not poison but protein powder. Bayakuya then says that her guess is correct and reminds the others that there was an empty shaker near Sakura's corpse. Thus it is concluded that the contents of the poison bottle and Sakura's shaker were swapped by the killer. Yasuhiro screams at the rich dude that there could have been poison left in the bottle, but he ignores him. Bayakuya then adds that while switching the contents the culprit must have spilled some kind of powder on the floor. He tells them that the footprints in spilled powder upstairs most probably belong to a sneaker and asks everyone to come up to the chemistry lab to compare everyone's footprints. Just as they are about to leave, Aoi stops them and confesses that she killed her best friend. Since Sakura would blindly trust her, she used that to her advantage and gave Sakura a shaker full of poison and then ran away. Makoto however finds this unbelievable considering how much Aoi always fought with the others for Sakura and then suddenly remembers that the door to the room was locked from the inside. He asks her for an explanation for that which she should have been able to explain if she was the killer indeed. She cannot answer the question and Kayoyuko then reveals that there was a shard of glass in the bottle of poison that Bayakuya got from the lab. Moreover the shards in the room were below the shaker and not above them as they should have been if the shaker was lying there before they entered. This immediately helps Makoto deduce what exactly had happened. When they broke the glass and entered the recreation room, it was the bottle of poison that was there. Someone switched out the bottles while the others were distracted by the corpse to cover up for the fighter's death. The person then came back to the room with everyone else and placed the shaker the moment they found an opportunity. Kayoyuko then adds that the yellow powder spilled on the chemistry lab floor was also on Sakura's shoes, which means that she herself was the one who spilled the powder while taking the poison off the shelf. This makes it clear that Sakura locked herself in the room and took the poison to delete herself. She called the three students to meet her against Aoi's protests, and after the meeting Aoi found her with a bloodied head. When the swimmer tried to take her to the infirmary, the fighter asked her to bring her a protein shake instead. When Aoi reached the lab, she saw the spilled powder in front of the poison's rack and realized that Sakura had taken poison with her. She rushed back, but it was too late by the time she reached there as the fighter had already drunk the poison. Aoi refuses to agree that that was what happened and keeps insisting that she was the killer but Makoto asks her to stop. Bayakuya refuses to believe the story even after the vote saying that Aoi hiding the cause of death was weird but Aoi pulls out Sakura's last note. She felt guilty about being the secret agent and tried to get everyone's forgiveness by talking to them. But all of them just felt scared of her and gave her a bloodied head instead and walked all over her feelings. Aoi thus wanted everyone to guess the wrong culprit and be killed as a punishment for what they did to her best friend. Monokuma interrupts them and pulls out a paper that he claims to be Sakura's real note to everyone's surprise. The note that Aoi had was written by the bear himself. Sakura had written that the mastermind had taken a member of her family hostage and forced her to do his bidding. She did not want to betray her friends anymore and she strongly believed that her death would stop all the killings and wanted everyone else to live on. The bear provokes her saying that she was going to be the reason everyone would have died against Sakura's wishes. Makoto shuts him up, and now everyone is now more motivated to cooperate and focus on finding the mastermind instead. Bayakuya says that he is dropping out of the game, and the only person he will kill now is the mastermind. Tauko obviously will follow him wherever he goes. Monokuma finds this extremely boring, and since there are no deaths today, he brings out the AI and declares that he will punish it. The laptop is placed in a factory compound that is broken down by a bulldozer to come stand behind the laptop. The machine then crushes the laptop into pieces with its claw and compresses it into a ball. The bear reveals that he had known about the AI for a long time. He then resumes reading Sakura's letter that claims that the mastermind is doing something weird with the students' bodies. The bear stops reading as the letter starts revealing his secrets after this which pisses the students off. After he disappears, Aoi apologizes for trying to kill everybody and a friendship starts budding among everyone. Later that night, Kayoyuko somehow enters Makoto's room and wakes him up like it is a very normal thing to do. She creepily asks him to meet her on the fourth floor, but when he reaches the room it is locked. Monokuma shows up just as Kayoyuko does and asks both of them to go back to their rooms. 
As they are on the way back, Kayoyuko whispers to Makoto that she found the 16th high schooler. She asks him to be careful of the super duper despair, Mukuro who is hiding in the school. The next morning a new floor of the school opens up, and everyone goes to explore. At this point everyone is so used to this that it has just become a routine. Later, all of them gather at the dining table to exchange notes. Aoi and Yasuhiro found a storage shed, chicken coop and a huge ass flower in the botanical garden. Bayakuya adds that this is the last floor since he did not find any staircase leading upstairs. He also found a destroyed classroom that stank of blood and death where he thinks a bunch of people died. He reminds them of the incident that had caused the school to shut down that the AI had talked about and concludes that the classroom is where it must have happened. When Kayoyuko tells everyone that she will try to figure out what exactly happened, Bayakuya stops her and asks her why she disappears every time something big happens. When he insists that she tell her what she exactly is, she finally replies that she does not remember. Bayakuya thinks that she is lying and asks her to hand him her keys since they cannot trust her enough to let her roam free. While Aoi and Yasuhito try to defend her, she just leaves the room after which Tauko reveals that she found a survival knife in one of the fifth floor classrooms. Since everyone has tried to hurt others in the past, they hand Makoto the responsibility to hold on to the knife for a while. Bayakuya praises Tauko for the good find which makes the girl blush like a true waifu. Just then an angry as hell Monokuma calls everyone to the gym. As soon as they reach there, they see him using a fish as a punching bag to vent out his anger. He tells them that one of the cameras was broken and something precious to him was stolen. He notices that Kayoyuko is missing and is sure that she is the thief. He starts throwing a tantrum and curses all of them before he disappears. Once Makoto is back in his room, he stuffs the knife in his drawer and is wondering who Kayoyuko really is when his doorbell rings. He opens the door to see her standing outside and she asks him to meet her in the changing room and runs away. Once they are in the changing room she tells him that this is the only place where they can be out of the field of vision of cameras. She then shows him a key that she found in the principal's office. When he asks her how she broke into the locked room, she tells him that Sakura had opened it for them before she died. She tells him that that is where she found information on Mukiro. She further adds that she thinks Mukiro is the mastermind behind all of this. He asks her to share any further information that she may have, but she confesses that she cannot share it right now. She then asks him to distract the bear for her while she investigates what the key is for. He protests because it is too risky to investigate alone, but the girl convinces him that it is necessary if they want to progress. He eventually agrees but asks her to make coming back alive her top priority. He makes her promise to turn back if things get too dangerous. Back in his corridor Makoto looks into a camera and asks Monokuma to come out since he wants to talk to him. The bear immediately shows up behind him and asks him what dirty stuff he and Kayoyuko were doing in the changing room for so long. He adds that he likes to keep his cameras clean and wholesome and hence, there are no cameras in the bathroom. They keep up this random conversation for a while and the bear eventually asks him the reason why he called the bear. Makoto asks the bear what the stolen treasure is but the bear simply expresses disappointment at him asking unimportant things. Monokuma tells him that it is a secret before starting to walk away. Makoto tries to stop the bear, but is unsuccessful, and he hopes that he could hold him off for long enough. Meanwhile, in another corner of the school Kayoyuko manages to open a barred gate with the key that she found. Later that night, Makoto is suddenly woken up from his sleep by nightmares. He sees the masked person that attacked him previously standing there with the survival knife in his hand. He closes his eyes out of fear, and when he reopens them, he sees Kayoyuko standing by his bed. Before he can react or make sense of the situation he falls back asleep. The next morning when Monokuma gives the students a wake-up call, Makoto wonders if it was just a dream. He rushes to the drawer but when he opens it, he sees that the knife is missing. He thus concludes that it was real, and he goes out to look for the others to tell them about it, but they are nowhere to be seen. Eventually he finds them in the basketball court with a bear in their hand and gets scared thinking about the times when the bear was previously violated. Bayakuya asks him to calm down and tells him that he came here to ask the bear what the treasure was. However he found him lying on the floor as a plain stuffed toy, and he called everyone else together to dismantle the thing. He tells him that they have been at it since last night, and that Aoi had gone to Makoto's room to call him, but he did not answer the door. Yasuhiro manages to open the bear just then, and finds a bomb inside which freaks everyone out. Bayakuya asks them to calm down and tells them that he has already switched off the vibration sensors. They conclude that something happened to the one controlling the bear and remember what the AI had said about the principal being the mastermind. When Makoto tells them that that might not be true according to Kayoyuko, they are surprised that he still believes her. They decide to head to the principal's office regardless to find out. 
As they approach the door they find out that it is locked and Bayakuya takes charge. He requests Tauko to retrieve an axe from the storage shed. He reasons that since the bear is now broken no one is going to stop them from breaking down the door. As Tauko leaves to do this errand, Makoto's mind wanders to the possibility of Kaoyuko being the one who destroyed the bear and hopes that she is alive. However, before he can dwell on this thought much Tauko returns without the pickaxe transformed into genocider show. When Bayakuya asks her where the axe is she tells them that a corpse is lying in the botanical garden which should probably be their first priority. They find the masked figure that attacked Makoto lying there with a knife stuck in their chest. As they wonder who it is Tauko runs to take off the mask despite everyone's protest. As soon as she pulls it off, the corpse explodes and throws her off in the distance. Everyone rushes to put out the fire that has started because of the explosion before any more evidence is destroyed. When they put it out Bayakuya tells them that it must be Kayoyuko since she is the only one not there with them. However Makoto tells them about the 16th student which reminds Aoi about the extra stand in the classroom trial that seems to support his argument. Just then Bayakuya notices a crest on the corpse's hand and finds a key lying nearby. He immediately recognizes that the pattern matches the data processing room and takes everyone there. Once inside, they see that the room is surrounded by screens playing surveillance footage and a creepy door is at the back. Aoi tries to open it but finds out that it is locked. Just then Yasuhiro notices a TV with an antenna in the room and just as everyone heads towards it to switch it on, the bear shows up at the door. He starts saying some confusing crap like it has been two years since he played dead and proceeds to tell them about the TV. As soon as he switches it on they see themselves on the screen. The bear reveals that the game is being broadcasted live to the entire nation as the ultimate reality TV show. The bear was working to make it as entertaining as possible. Aoi refuses to believe that the police and the entire nation just sat by as they watched the students go through all of this. The bear just tells her that they are indeed just enjoying what they see on TV. When asked why he would spend so much money on this, he refuses to answer and walks out telling them to be present for the classroom trial. Shortly after his departure Kayoyuko quietly enters the room hurriedly. She shares the results of her investigation, confirming the truth that the corpse indeed belongs to Mukuro. She thanks Makoto because she found a lot of things in her investigation because of him. On the way to the trial Kayoyuko tells Makoto that the key she had found is a master key and hence opens every room in the school. As soon as the trial starts, Bayakuya opens with accusing Kayoyuko for the murder since she is the only one without an alibi. Since the sprinklers in the garden go off every day at 7.30 am, and the corpse was completely dry, it meant that the body was put there after that. He adds that Makoto was with a gang during that time. Kayoyuko counters by saying that the corpse was in fact wet. Bayakuya tells her that that was only because they poured water on it to put out the fire. Kayoyuko then adds that she saw a vinyl sheet kept in the storage shed. That could have been used to cover the corpse to keep it dry, even if the murder occurred before 7.30 and hence Makoto could have committed the murders too. Bayakuya then reveals that the knife found in the corpse's chest was a fake because there was no blood around the corpse. This pointed out that the culprit stained the lab coat before putting it onto the corpse. There was a chicken missing from the coop which was probably the source of the fake blood on the coat. Yasuhiro adds that the handbook indeed claims that the victim was struck with a steel pipe to her head and concludes that that was the murder weapon. Bayakuya shuts him up and tells him that the murder weapons were the arrows that he had found in the dojo earlier. The culprit duct taped a bunch of them together and struck with them, which is supported by the bloody duct tape that they found earlier. He again goes back to his argument that Kayoyuko is the culprit, but she refuses saying that she has never stepped inside the dojo. Bayakuya counters by saying that he found a key to one of the dojo lockers in her room. She then reminds him that since he has taken her keys away she cannot enter her room. Makoto realizes right away that she is lying because she has the master key with her and hence can open any room. But he is sure that she has a plan and is desperate to save her because she is the one with the most amount of information. He thus decides to stall the trial and points out that they do not even know who the victim is which makes the trial strange. When Yasuhiro points out that it is Mukiro's corpse he reminds him that they have no proof of that. Thus he is sure that the bear is planning something shady by making them all participate in a trial where everything is so unclear. When he confronts the bear the principal just declares the end of their time limit and asks them to vote right away. At the last moment Kayoyuko adds that since Makoto was the one who found the key to the locker room he might as well have planted it there to frame her. Everyone thinks that that is the only explanation that makes sense and ends up voting for him. He is declared guilty by the bear as well and is sent for execution. He is tied to a bench in a classroom and the bear pushes his bench towards a crusher gradually. 
However, at the last moment, the AI takes over and stops the crusher using a virus that it planted when it infiltrated the network. Makoto thus just ends up falling through a vent and the bear's plans are destroyed. All the other students see this play out and finally believe that Makoto is innocent since the execution could be stopped. When they mock the bear that his plans have failed, he tells them that the dude has fallen to the basement that is full of all kinds of harmful trash. Makoto will just die a slow and painful death there either way. Makoto wakes up in the junkyard and tries to look for a way out, but is unsuccessful since everything is locked tight. Since there is no food or water around, he decides to preserve his energy and goes to sleep. A few days later, he is suddenly woken up by a crash, and when he opens his eyes, he sees that Kayawuka has fallen near him from above. She tells him that she is here to save him and gives him food that she has brought with her. She apologizes for framing him, but he tells her that the mastermind is the one at fault here since it is his plans that are causing them to turn against each other. Once he has eaten up, she tells him he was the one supposed to die and not Mukiro, but she showed up that night and saved him. The mastermind wanted to murder him and frame Kayoyuko to have her executed. Since his plan of killing Makoto failed, he placed a different corpse there instead and framed her. But when Makoto started talking in the trial about how weird and unfair it was, he was deemed as a nuisance as well, which led the mastermind to switch plans and have him executed first. Kayoyuko then reminds him that they need to get out of here as soon as possible, and thus stands up to unlock the exit with the master key. Once they are outside, they see what seems to be a never-ending ladder that looks like the only way out. After climbing for a while, they find a platform where they decide to take a break. Kayoyuko tells him that she is regaining her memories bit by bit, and reveals that her title was Super Duper Detective. She tells him that the mastermind probably wiped her memories because her detective abilities would be a problem to him. She then shares a surprising revelation, confiding that her initial desire to attend Hope's Peak Academy came from a longing to meet the principal who also happens to be her father. He was lost to her since childhood, and she orchestrated her own scouting to the prestigious institution in hopes of reconnecting with him. After some more climbing, they finally reach a trap door, and when they open it, they reach the trash room. They immediately go to talk to Monokuma, who is pissed that Kayoyuko saved the guy. When he tells them that he will be executing Makoto again, the girl tells him that this will only make the audience of the live broadcast think that he is too weak to beat them fair and square. This would directly translate into the fact that despair cannot beat hope, and thus if he wants to make them truly despair she asks him to hold a fair retrial. The bear gets provoked and agrees to hold a final showdown. But to make things more interesting for him, he decides to add in another rule, and tells them that if they can find all the secrets about this school, they will win, but if not, they will all be executed. He concludes that he cannot wait to see the despair that they will be overcome with when they learn the truth, and they walk away. In the dining room as everyone is wondering whether the game is rigged since no one died in Makoto's trial, the dude walks in. Everyone is shocked to see him, and they try apologizing but Makoto insists that none of this was their fault. When he amps them up with his signature pep talk saying that they cannot give up, Kayoyuko tells them about the deal that they made with Monokuma. Just as Makoto reassures them that they can easily deal with it if they work together, the bear appears on a pot announcement and officially declares the beginning of the final showdown. Makoto is determined to execute the bear and finally escape this twisted game. The bear makes a bold declaration, announcing that all the doors in the school will be unlocked to level the playing field. Makoto immediately pulls out his handbook and notices that the entire map of the school is now accessible unlike before. All the students start exploring the school and Makoto and Kayoyuka reach a fancy room at the end of a ruined corridor in the process. Makoto sees in his handbook map that this is the actual principal's room. The girl immediately heads towards the computer, but finds nothing useful on it after going through all the files. She suddenly notices that there is an app that is asking for a password. She tries out everything that she can think of, but nothing works, but the boy suddenly gets an idea. He enters Kayoyuko's name in the password field, and turns out that her father had indeed kept that very secure word as his password. The password opens a hidden door in the room, and when they enter Makoto finds a gift box. Kayoyuko who has already explored this room with her master key warns him not to open it, but the stubborn guy does it nonetheless. He finds bones inside which scares the hell out of him. Kayoyuko tells him that it is her father's remains and Makoto asks her the reason behind her certainty. She reminds him that the bear had said that the only people alive in this school are the high schoolers, and that the AI had said that the principal is still inside the school. If he was not this stupid, he too would have been able to figure it out. Makoto finally gets his brain working and figures out that the principal is not the mastermind since he is dead. He goes to pray to the dead when he suddenly notices an electronic handbook among the remains and pulls it out. Just then Kayoyuko starts throwing a tantrum about not being able to settle her score with her father. 
He turns to see that she is looking at a photo of her and her father's. She suddenly keeps the photo frame down and runs away after being overcome by emotions. Makoto goes to have a look at the picture when he notices a memory card taped to the back of the frame. He takes it out and inserts it into the computer and asks Kayoyuka to come have a look at it with him. On it, they find a video file, and when they open it, they see that it is a recording of the principal asking each of the freshmen if they would be okay with spending the rest of their lives in the school. Each of them are willingly consenting to it in the video and Makoto is just freaking out because he remembers none of it. He wonders why he would willingly agree to be trapped here, and just then the bear appears out of nowhere and pulls out the plug. The memory card burns down, and when Makoto confronts him, he just ignores the dude and leaves. As Makoto is trying to talk to Kayoyuko about what could have been in the rest of the video, she just asks him to leave her alone for a while, and he agrees. Meanwhile, Bayakuya is in the library where he finds a student's register in which he finds Mukuro's profile. He sees that she had no external wounds on her body at the time of her joining which contradicts the fact that the masked corpse that they found had wounds from a while ago. While he is busy racking his head over this Monokuma appears and leaves a note for him and leaves sneakily. In another corner, Makoto finds a ruined locker room, and when he opens the lockers using the principal's handbook, he sees that it belongs to Yasuhiro. He opens a notebook and sees class notes in it, which shocks him since they have had no classes since coming here. He opens another locker where he finds a diary belonging to Kayoyuko. She has written something about the school's shelter plan and her plans to question her father about it. He remembers her saying that she has not met her father since she was a kid and wonders if this is just a setup by the mastermind to confuse them. He then heads to the biology lab where he finds Genocider show messing with a corpse. She notices that the corpse is burnt down completely and has multiple stab wounds on it. She then suddenly asks him where Bayakuya is and threatens to kill him if he does not tell her. She then admits that she was kidding and just leaves to go find her Prince Charming. Makoto notices that nine freezer compartments are in use for the corpses while there have been ten deaths. Just then Monokuma appears and leaves him a photograph to look at. When Makoto picks it up he notices that there are 15 students in the photo. However the weird part is that it includes Mukiro but not him. A while later they head to the final classroom trial, where Monokuma participates as well this time around. If the bear loses, he will be the one to be executed. As the trial begins it is revealed that everyone received pictures containing 15 students except themselves. Makoto then concludes that it was just a trap set up by the mastermind to make them think that the others are secret agents and make them fight among themselves. As the students start claiming that they do not remember those pictures being taken, and thus they must be fake, Makoto interrupts saying that there might be another possibility. He tells them about the stuff he found in the lockers and shows it to them. He concludes that it was not only Kayoyuka who could not remember her past, but all of their memories have been wiped away. The others start protesting, but then he pulls out the memory card that he found in the principal's office. He tells them about the contents of the video, but the students find it very hard to understand. The bear then confirms that the theory is true, and when they ask the bear how the memories were taken away, he refuses to answer them saying that that is not important. When he reminds them that the trial is about the death of Mukiro primarily, Makoto says that that is the most obvious answer. He tells them that the culprit is the mastermind, and it is no one among the six of them. The bear reminds him of the ten corpses that he found and points out that it only leaves the six standing here right now. Makoto objects saying that only nine freezers were in use in the bio lab, which means that the corpse that they found in the end was a recycled corpse. He tells them that the burnt corpse had multiple stab wounds which exactly resemble Junko's cause of death. Based on this, the others conclude that Mukuro is the culprit but Makoto refuses that as well. He tells them about the night he was attacked in his room, and concludes that the masked person might have been the culprit. Makoto then tells them that he found out that Mukiro was a part of a soldier's group, which is supposed to have a tattoo of a wolf on their wrist, and since his attacker did not, he concludes that it was not Mukiro behind the mask. Monokuma then directs everyone's attention to Kayoyuko's choice of attire, noting that she has consistently worn gloves throughout their time together. This observation sparks a moment of curiosity and suspicion among the group, as they consider that the gloves might be hiding the tattoo. Kayoyuko calmly but decisively removes her gloves, unveiling the flesh beneath against her wishes. As her hands are revealed, the room falls silent as they see burn marks that she got as a novice detective. Makoto then jumps in and says that the mastermind is in fact Junko, who is pretending to be dead to remain hidden. He tells the others how Monokuma shut the video down just as Junko's interview was about to begin, and that her face was hidden in each photo. He figures that the bear did it because the Junko in the video and the photos was not the Junko that they knew. She had switched places with Mukuro at the very beginning and faked her death by killing Mukuro. 
As the smoke billows and swirls, hiding Monokuma from view, a tense silence falls over the room. When the haze clears, Junko steps forward. With a smirk playing on her lips, she unveils the startling truth that she and Mukuro were twins, both bearing the title of the Super Duper Despairs. Tauko asks them the reason behind the sisters' different last names, but Junko just gets annoyed at having been asked this question again and asks her to figure it out herself. Aoi is shocked that the psycho killed her own older sister, but the mastermind jokes that she had deep reasons. She then apologizes for her weird behavior claiming that since she has not been around people for very long she has forgotten how to behave. She adds that she gets fed up of her own personality because she is always overcome by despair about random crap. She tells them that for the school to function smoothly, she needed someone pulling strings in the background. Someone had to keep an eye on them and control the bear. However, Mukuro would not have been able to do that according to her as she was only gifted in physical strength. And since she joined a mercenary group Junko did not consider her to be the kind who thinks. Thus she decided to take control and admit Mukuro into the school instead. But her title of the super duper soldier was not acceptable to the society and Junko personally found it gross. Moreover, she did not want her own title of super duper model to go to waste. Thus they switched places, but she had not expected Mukuro's personality to be so different from hers. She seemed more of a side character than the main character that she had wanted Mukuro to be. Due to her personality and appearance the viewers were confident that she would die early on. Thus Junko had her sister killed to meet viewers' expectations and keep the show's rating high. When Makoto has trouble believing that she would kill her sister over such a lame reason she also confesses that she had grown tired of her. She could see things at the school heading in a boring direction. Thus she killed Mukuro to change things up and make an example out of her. Thus her death was an act of betrayal and was not a part of the plan like everything else was. The others remember how it was too obvious that Mukuro did not expect her death and Junko admits that her sister sucked at acting either ways. Makoto calls her a pathetic psycho for killing her own sister, but she explains that this is their life as despair sisters. They were born with tears of despair, and they live in constant despair, which means dying and killing do not mean much to them. Bayakuya eventually gets bored by the ridiculously long self-introduction and asks her to stop diverting their attention from the actual mystery. Aoi asks Junko whether the mystery has to do something with the reason they lost their memories which the mastermind confirms. The students then persist in their demands to uncover the secrets of the school, which causes Junko's patience to wear thin. She just decides to jog their memory and activates the TV, revealing a chilling scene from the outside world where people wearing bear masks rampage through the streets, leaving destruction and flames in their wake. The footage shows the students the despair that grips the world beyond the confines of their isolated school. Everyone gets an existential crisis because of the fact that they do not remember this big of an event. Just then Makoto remembers that Tauko's alter ego operates independently. Since she does not share memories with Genocider Sho he asks her to switch since the serial killer might know something about how they ended up here. Yasuhiro agrees with him and begs her to change, but she still refuses. However Bayakuya too starts asking her to change, and since she cannot refuse him because of the big crush she has on him, she agrees. Once she switches, they show her the live footage playing on the screens and ask her to give them any information that she might have about it. She is surprised that the fools have forgotten about the event and tells them about the biggest and baddest incident in human history. With a grim tone, she describes how the world was plunged into chaos and destruction so immense that it verged on being deemed a natural disaster rather than a mere man-made catastrophe. All of a sudden everyone turned into bare-faced individuals in the middle of this chaos. The others tell her that this still does not answer any questions to which she confesses that she herself does not know anything beyond this. She tells them that Junko watched it all in real time, so she would be the better person to tell them more about it. When the others are annoyed that she never said anything about this to anyone before, the dumbhead replies that she only gives out information when people specifically ask for it. When Bayakuya is irritated by the ridiculousness of the situation, Junko adds that she would like to tell them something about Bayakuya's family. This immediately grabs his attention, and she tells him that the Tagami family that controls the entire world was wiped off a year ago along with the world. Makoto suddenly goes through a moment of enlightenment and points out that they should remember about the end of the world if it happened a year ago since they came to the school only a few weeks ago. The mastermind then tells them that they have been here for two years and asks them to figure out the rest of the story based on these hints. They realize that the pictures that they all received are real, and that they have all been classmates since the last two years. Junko then tells them that they have now been killing their friends for two whole years. She adds that their first year here was peaceful, and everyone enjoyed to their fullest, but the end of the world that was brought about by the Despair Sisters also affected the school. 
Almost all the students were killed, and the 16 that entered the game were the only survivors. The principal then tried to protect them by turning the school into a shelter, but he did not realize that the super-duper despairs were among them. Thus, he unintentionally ended up trapping them all here in a cage that kept them from escaping despair. In fact, they were the ones who shut all the doors and windows with their own hands and once this was done, it was showtime for the Despair sisters. She confesses that organizing the killing game was the very reason that the sisters had infiltrated the school. She further adds that the killing game was supposed to be the Despair sisters' climax to the destruction that humanity had come down to. They kept the students alive intentionally to have them kill each other for the sake of the game. There are apparently still a few people who live in the outside world and cling to hope. She hijacked the airwaves and started broadcasting the game to show them how things actually worked with humans. Since people considered Hope's Peak Academy as a symbol of hope, the broadcast worked to fill mankind with despair. Seeing the students filled with hopelessness fulfills her kink, and she adds that it was a part of her plan to make the students solve the puzzles so that they lead themselves to this depression. Kayuko points out that all of this is too large scale for the sisters to carry out on their own, and asks her if she is part of an organization or a group. Junko replies that it is none of the above, and that it is an idea that spreads like common cold. Yasuhiro starts begging for his life, which further adds to Junko's enjoyment. But she admits that it has no effect on her since she is pursuing pure despair. There is no meaning or motive behind her pursuit, and hence no one can counter her. Makoto asks her to shut up and doubts that she is telling them the truth. He adds that even if she is, he will not give in to despair and lose to her. He adds that he will keep going to honor the ones who died but Junko just gets bored by his motivational crap. She simply announces the beginning of the vote since she does not have the time for further debate. However, she decides to switch up the rules a bit since this is their last vote, and tells them that all of them will have to vote for the same thing. Even if one of them votes differently, they will be subject to punishment, and thus she will not be participating in the vote. When Makoto claims that none of them would choose to be executed, she clarifies that their punishment would be that they get to live out their lives in this school calmly and peacefully. This makes letting her win seem like an appealing option to a few of them. Makoto suddenly objects saying that that is not a true life, and that he will not let her do to them whatever she pleases. She gets annoyed by the boy and is struck by an idea to make the game more enjoyable for the viewers. She switches up the punishment and declares that if the others sacrifice Makoto to a freaky execution they can have their peaceful lives. Makoto is left speechless at this, and he sees his friends actually considering the option which adds on to his fear. Junko enjoys the look of despair that shows up on their face, and to further win them over to her plan, she adds that the outside world would kill them because of pollution. The only reason they can breathe in the school is because of an air purifier in the physics lab. The moment she dies, the purifier will stop working, and they will no longer be able to live in the school. Makoto suddenly screams claiming that the psycho is wrong. He tells her that no one has fallen into despair, and that no one will lose to her. He becomes a motivational guru, and tells her that hope is inside all of them. Junko soon gets bored and asks him if he will be this annoyingly stubborn till the end. She does not wait for his answer, and just announces the beginning of the final vote. She is sure that this vote will be the end of the lame boy and his hope. Makoto refuses to give up and vows to contaminate everyone with the hope that is inside him. He adds that living a life without hope cannot be counted as actual living, but sees his friend's scared faces and launches into his pep talk mode. He reminds Yasuhiro how he was the one who wanted to leave more than anyone else and questions him about his readiness to give in to the mastermind's wishes. He reminds Aoi that Sakura fought till the end to save them even after knowing the truth. She definitely would not cave if she were here. He reminds Bayakuya that he is the heir of a huge family and has the power to start everything over. He remembers his goal of killing the mastermind and Tako follows wherever Bayakuya goes. Makoto then reminds Kayoyuko that her father wanted all of them to stay away from despair and died in the process. Kayoyuko agrees and adds that her father would never have asked them to stay here if it meant sacrificing Makoto. She tells him that he probably did not end up here because of his luck but because he was meant to persist till the end and destroy the super-duper high school despair. She gives him the title of super-duper hope, and this validation only motivates him further. All of them band together behind the dude, and he is confident that they will not lose to despair. Junko just finds all of this really lame, and is afraid of her show ratings dropping. Makoto continues his monologue regardless of this, and adds that he might not be great enough to be called hope, but he still will not give up. At this point Junko is practically begging him to stop with his monotonous speech, but he does not pay any attention to her. Finally, Bayakuya interrupts and declares that they are ready to vote and asks her to begin the process. The other students all agree and swear that they will put an end to this ridiculous game. 
As the voting begins Junko cheers for despair, while Makoto is sure that hope will win. The voting results come in and reveal that the mastermind has lost which breaks her heart. She is having difficulty believing that she actually lost, and the students mock her saying that even the super duper despair cannot handle despair. However the masochist Junko reveals that she just finds it awesome that she built an intricate plan over two years which failed at the very end. She adds that this is the biggest despair that she will face in her life, and is excited to receive her punishment. While Makoto claims that none of them want her to actually die, she asks him to shut up as she is looking forward to the despairing death. She presses the button to activate her death, and is immediately put through all the punishments that the other students had to go through. She is put in front of the pitching machine where a ton of balls hit her at god speed, and then she is launched into the motorcycle cage. She is then burnt on the stake followed by crushing by the bulldozer. This is followed by a launch into space where the rocket crashes, and she is finally crushed to her death under Makoto's crusher. With a collective resolve the six survivors stand before the exit door later, with a blend of apprehension and determination. As the door slides open a sense of anticipation fills the air, but is overcome by courage and hope. They walk forward with heads held high, ready to confront whatever challenges await them. They find comfort in each other's presence as they enter into the strange world beyond. They are fueled by the belief that together they can overcome any obstacle that dares to stand in their way. If you liked this video, you would love the story of this legendary archer who marries the enemy leader.